He was Steve from Killick, which apparently is almost but not quite the same backwards. Uh, yeah. As we learned earlier. Who makes these guitars that don't have pickups in them? I mean, not the not the ones that we rock and metal people like. These are the guitars that are not so full. They're more hollow. And you do the pretty stuff with them. Yeah, they're proper guitars. At some point in this video, we will reference his former <laughs> occupation for a few seconds. We will just... Just to illuminate why possibly certain mm. things oh, happened okay. on certain guitars. We will not go into detail. There are other pages for that. Um, so um, since I have this on my lap right here, we'll talk about it. It's a baritone acoustic with fan fret or multi-scale. I think fan fret, we can't say because someone owns it or someone did Is own that it. Right? Oh, um, yeah. It actually wasn't Ding Wall. Someone else did, did fan fret. And Dingwall called it fanfret, but officially what is not licensed or copyrighted is multi-scale. Lilu Dallas multi-scale. Mm. Anyone get that? Anyone get that? Okay. Um, Mila Trebovich is there with orange hair and then the nothing. Okay. Um, moving on. Um, pretty guitar. Nice. Not the biggest body. Just like Mila. What? No. Um, and... Uh, that's kind of neat. It's not not the typical rosette. It's not round. No. And it's is it inlay work? Mm. What is this? Yeah, it's inlaid ebony. Wow, that that looks like a lot of work. You have a lot of time on your hands. Oh yes. You, well, when you love guitars like this, you spend a lot of time with them. Uh, we have a pick guard. Mm -hmm. Very subtle. And then, as I earlier deducted, a quilted mahogany. And it's always a shame that these guitars have the nicest woods on the back and the sides because the tops have to be spruce. Mm. Like Marvel, you know? Spruce Banner, ODC, Spruce Wayne. When I made that joke last time, Leslie said, why the fuck didn't you go for Spruce Springsteen? Mm. And she's fully right. Yeah, That's yeah. way more obvious than Marvel or DC. Yeah. So. I, I might have got that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you came here for information, it's the wrong channel. So it's a baritone. So usually baritones are the six lower strings of a seven string. Uh, which would make this a B string, but Steve went with a C. Yeah, I've gone with a C with that, yeah. Because, well, low interval limits, you want some chords still to be usable, and it, when it's really that low, the, the thirds, that works. Wait, oh God, if this is a C. Then that's F. A flat. Say. Yes. Okay. Interesting. So an A flat still works for a third. But you know when you play the G chord, the traditional G chord, that third is actually kind of already a little bit low. So still kind of works, but this. Mm. There are physical mm. limits for low intervals and an octave you can play as low as you want a fifth you can play as low as you want works um we learned this as arrangers for the orchestra you cannot do certain intervals lower than a certain note and for a third it's actually a little bit lower than for a minor third uh, a seven you cannot do it blah 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 so we technically have to learn all of these by heart which i did and then forgot um but you have to be careful on these low instruments with low interval limits. If I do this chord, there is a problem because this, mm. single notes, yes, but there's something slightly dissonant about it. And that might have something to do with the upper harmonics coming down, being more clear, and then clashing. But what do I know, right? 
Um, so going not to a low B, but going to a C is possibly saving you from Literally. some of that Literally. low interval limited. It's a, it's a trade off. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we actually wrote a song um, on a baritone acoustic. Uh, Till the sun comes up, watch that on my channel. Rafael Cano wrote that. Uh, don't know how it went, uh, something like. It's just a good instrument to have to inspire you to go in a different direction. Lower doesn't mean heavier. No, definitely not. But it just gives you tones that the other guitars don't, and that will drive you to write different things. Maybe a little bit more. It's nice played with with a with an ordinary guitar. The two together. Yes, absolutely. Nicely. Now, the question is always why the fan fret or multi scale, and you said it right, Floyd. Well, yeah. The idea is to get more punchiness from your um, lower notes. You stretch the string more. So you get a tighter string. Because I often get comments like, oh, this is about tuning stability or intonation. It's got nothing no, to do with no, that. No, no. A lower string to be fast needs to have a certain tightness, tight like a toiger. And that means longer is better. That's why basses have long strings. Um, but the higher notes would be really tight. Oh, cut your fingers. Yeah. You cut your fingers on an, here it's not so bad, but on an electric guitar, you wouldn't be able to bend them. Of course, the other thing you could do is put a huge string on it, but then you you, you wouldn't be able to play yeah. it. Yeah. And um, it, this just makes a lot of sense for lower tuned instruments. Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily need fan fret on an uh, ukulele. But now I actually want to see that. Fan fret, you could, completely pointless, but that's pretty much what we do here. Now you opted for interesting big dots <laughs> and then double small dots and big dot, big dot, double small dot. A very visible fifth and twelfth fret. So you definitely you like visual feedback. <laughs> I guess I must do. I didn't know that, but I've just learned. That. I'm big on visual yeah, feedback. Yeah. Like it, you know, it's it's important. Um, we got the tuners that we dare not say their name no, on no, it. No. I'll change them. I'll change them. Okay, let's look at something more here. Um, definitely very original instrument. Um, where? Oh, you got the one. Let's look string? at that one. Yep. Yeah. Got a six string here. Um, got my first real six string. Bought it at the. No? BBG, yeah. Bought it, <laughs> bought it at the BBGF. Yeah. Um, I played this earlier, and it's a very unique instrument because it's got a super thin neck. Almost reminds me a little bit of like an Ibanez Wizard neck. Mm. Um, and it's very, very, very easy to play. Um, you did go for a gigantic heel here. Yes, yes. There, there, there was a practical reason for doing that, which is non-musical, in that Zirikote is very expensive wood. Mm -hmm. And I only had that much Zirikote. <laughs> you had to fill it. It covers the gap. So it's a practical thing. And we're going to get to the gap no, no, in a yeah, bit. Yeah, oh. mm. You know we have to. I, uh, so let's, let's play this first. So we got a beautiful Ciricote or Ciricote here. And, well, we'll get to that. Um, and, of course, on the fretboard. I mean, how I love multicolored fretboard mm. woods. That's absolutely beautiful. Um, you went with blocks instead of dots on the sides. Do we have a... Block dot mm. side cam. Oh, wait, we just do this. Here, see, 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 see this? Actually, our eyes are, it's not, fo it's not focusing. Here we go. Is it now? Who knows? Well, that's what it looks like. Um, 
interesting headstock shape, mm -hmm. but probably gives us str yeah, almost straight almost straight strings. Yeah, and very very interesting tuner heads, skeleton mm -hmm. tuners, and um, they are GraphTech ratio tuners, which you know I love. Didn't know they made these. And on the ratio tuners, every full turn gives you a half step. That's right. And it's super interesting on these because you can actually see the different gear ratios because they're open. So I expect these to be rather a bit better than the ones we don't talk about. Now everyone's going, which, which, which are the ones you didn't talk about? Watch my videos and you know. So let's see. They're sh. <laughs> little bit muted on the low like like less i mean it could be older strings yeah it's a little bit older strings ah, they're not new they're not new it's not a super big guitar doesn't project far. no it's a it's a it's a quiet listening it's it's got a little bit of a boxy character but intimate i would say to the chord that we did earlier. Why does that work? Someone tell me. A major and uh, G major to A major gives me four and a five in D. And then an F sharp major. I know it's the flat three in D borrowed from D minor. It's a modal interchange to D minor. I just don't understand why it works so well. Someone knows what that is, let me know. Those are the nice chords that uh, this guy from that band from the England did back in the day. I don't know. I don't know. And then he did a... Something about a bird, bluebird, blackbird, something, yeah. some bird singing. I don't know. I don't know how to actually play it, but those are really cool chords. You got the, the G in there continuously. And the trick is, you know those chords? You just play less of them. Just play those two strings and then open G. It's actually a lot easier than the four chords. So that song is ridiculously simple. And then modal interchange to flat seven. was wrong um it's i gotta say this it's not the biggest sounding guitar mm -hmm. but it's a lot of fun to play that's why earlier i just couldn't stop should we jazz and we are <laughs> let's do it Jazz Film Club, smoking in the corner, drinks on the table. That's really all I know. Then something about Other notes that sound good. Yes. Um, so these are subtle instruments. I'm thinking if I dig in a bit more. Mm. Let, let's see. Mm. Doesn't want that. Nice. Gets gets all of a sudden back too much treble. It, it's a it's a thing of several high end acoustic guitars that I know, Lakewood, for example. They want to be played with their fingers. If you dig in, all of a mm. sudden. Uh, I had several people in the studio bringing their high-end $4,000 Lakewoods, and then I gave them my 
your Takamini and said, you can strum that. If you play that with your fingers, nothing comes out, mm. but that's a guitar that, you know, you can, you can strum. So it's mm. oftentimes it's, it's a trade-off. Yeah, it's always a trade-off. That's the beautiful subtlety that it has with the fingers. Yeah, so it's not, no. I'm also playing a three millimeter chicken pick, so that that's not helping. Bam, bam. If you if you do it suddenly, Bending on acoustics, it's not happening. <laughs> Let's not. Now, talking about Steve's former profession, as I introduced earlier. Now, you know my Halabitsa QD and what they did to the back. Now, Steve's done something very similar. And after I found this and referenced it as a beautiful rendition in homage of the female form. He told me um, what he did for a living. What did you do for a living? You've been listening. I was a gynecologist. We know. Yeah, you know now, <laughs> and I told you off camera, didn't I? Inspiration. You, you didn't say you were going to mention it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not deliberate. Obviously, the guys from uh, Halabitsa did it deliberately. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have a beautiful piece of wood and you can get that figure in there, it's just us horrible men that want to see that shape. It's, you, you it's, said, a, it's an ink blot, isn't it? You I said mean, a Rorschach if, test, and it, it's an ink blot. If you see an ink blot, then it's, it's a vagina. And, and, and most of the times when we look at ink blots because it is parallel two sides, I see vaginas everywhere. That might just be me, okay? It might just be me. But it's a beautiful thing. So I'm not ashamed of that. And it, it is beautiful. And seeing it in this piece of wood. Wow. Beautiful. And then we have a 12 string. Whoa. Which is handling very differently in terms of weight distribution it's because it's being it's <laughs> yeah. on the end, yes. Wow. The center of gravity is not where you think it is. And no, those actually. are Goto? There's Goto, yeah. They are beautiful with their super roundedness. Cool. Well, um, you're limited with heads for a 12 string because they've got to be small, yeah, otherwise yeah. they hit each other. Um, Volut, beautiful um, ebony back, super dark. Absolutely beautiful, um, with a nice whatever you call that thing. Yeah, that 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 thing, something twiddly bit, uh, twiddly bit arrow binding. Um, feedback killer. If you want to, best taken off. And how do I take it off? Uh, Is it magnetic? Flick? No, it just flicks off because it. So ah. on the nice. And uh, his logo, I would say. Logo. The yep. dragonfly. Very nicely done. It's so beautiful up here, actually. Um, now I was afraid of 12 strings because once you start tuning them, oh, you sit there for hours. I'm pretty sure that most 12 strings in the world have not changed their strings in years oh. because who wants to do that? <laughs> I have a 12 string. There's one string that's broken. I'm not even going to, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go there. It's an 11 string and I'm keeping it that way. Oh. I don't need any other chord in there. Come on. Oh, let's, let's do the cool chords for the cool kids. Oh, no, oh, I'm working on it. My finger, the other thing, that's correct. Should 
Should we try this? I have no idea if I can pull this off. Oh my god! Wait, what? No, I'm doing it, wait! I've heard that played by lots of people. And it's interesting hearing your guitars played by lots of people, but I've not heard it played like that before. So it's you mean like this, you mean this yet. shitty. Not, did I say shitty? No, I did not. <laughs> yeah, um, different. It was implied. <laughs> well, I'm just looking for nice open chords. It feels that the neck width mm. is Narrow, narrower than other 12 strings I've played. Mm. Yes, it might well be. Try to play it so that when I, my, when I play my crappy play, my thumb comes over the top. So I, Ah, okay. So, Which is, of course, tough if you actually leave the space for all the strings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I played, played that for me to play. Ah, okay. But you also sell these, Pushy hands. right? You also, oh, yeah, yeah. You don't just build for yourself. Uh, no. Because then what's the point in coming here trying to sell these? Well, listening to people play them. <laughs> Let me pay to come to a guitar show so that someone can play the guitars. <laughs> now we're in mandolin territory. Too cool. I'm sorry. It's, the problem with the 12 string is dedicating the resources in terms of money mm -hmm. to buy something so unique that you use not all the time is difficult for most people. But then when you need that tool, it is so cool to use. Like I could get inspired right now, just, you know, pr write songs. <laughs> Get up here, but you know where it's going. Just fun. Um, for the more complex chords, I'm looking for a little bit more space. But then, what do I know? I don't play 12 strings a lot or acoustics a lot. So I literally, mm. I'm not very qualified. So, where do you make these, Steve? I make them up in East Yorkshire. Yeah, a place called Beverly. It's, it's on this, it's on this yeah. island, right? It's on this I, I island. Yeah. I didn't know different places in England are all the same. And then you tell Lee, oh, you're from Wales. Isn't that England? And then he hits you. And then you need a Band-Aid mm. and all that stuff. Oh, then, right. then you tell the Scottish, isn't it just England? And then they get really upset. I don't know. Like we, for the Americans, I'm from Europe. Mm. It's all the same. Then again, oh, tell yeah. a Frenchman that Germany and France are the same. Could be a problem. Could be a problem. Could be a problem. Well, up the M1 and turn right. Up the M1 and turn right. That's where you find it. Just do that. Don't even call. Don't look at any other addresses. Up the M1, turn right, wherever you want to turn right, by the way. Um, and you told me earlier that these are actually not ultra expensive. I don't think so, no. That'll cost you 2,300 pounds. For pounds, yes, not euros. Freaky deaky euros, money yeah, that sorry. they use over here on the island. Yeah. Um, but for a hand built acoustic, does it come mm. in a gig bag or a case? Or do I have to drag it away you in, in linens? To, you would have to wrap it in cloth and take it away for that. <laughs> Damn it. Um, well, hand made in uh, by Steve from Killick, 
very, very nice. I like it. I just love the playability. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, they've been out in the sun now, so if you hear some sounds you don't like, that's the sun, that's not the guitar. Um, I love the selection of woods. And uh, after you were done with your you know, day job, you said, mm. I want to now build guitars. That's right, something completely different. Um, well, not quite that different as we've seen. Well, well I, I thought I mean, it was different. It's supposed to be different. <laughs> It's only your eyes that do it, doesn't it? Only your eyes. Because I'm a perf. Okay, fine. Um, very cool. Well, if you want to see other people play these, uh, there's a video uh, from Mike on CGS and also um, Adam Steely Lily um, at Hopwall Studios coming. So, or at already out. What do I know when this video is coming out? Um, well, thank you thank for your you. time. And uh, we will put, Adam, what do we do? What do we do at the end? At the end, vaginas at the end. No, not vaginas at the end. Animals at the end. I mean, they also do have vaginas, I've heard. I've read a book. Only half of them. Oh, oh that's true. Half of the animal. 